Welcome to this podcast by St. Catherine's Church Ventnor here on the Isle of Wight. Thank you for joining us. We continue our series reflecting on the words of the Lord's Prayer and we thank the Reverend Gordon Bates for this week's talk. And we would like to hear from you with a photo or a few words that illustrates what the Lord's Prayer means to you. Send them to me. The details are up on the screen. This week's service is dedicated to Jenny Hopkins Holder, a lay minister to the churches here in Ventnor and a supporter of our podcast who sadly passed away this week. Her energy and enthusiasm will be missed by all those who she came into contact with. After our opening prayer, we will have that great song of praise, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. As we gather and are united in the Holy Spirit, so we join together now in a prayer of praise. Gracious God, you are the rock of our lives. Your strength sustains us. Your love enfolds us. Your mercy brings forgiveness. We praise you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. readings are taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 6 to 7, 
and 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Verse 9 of chapter 6 of Matthew says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I learnt these words more than eight decades ago at day school, and also in an organisation that seems to be no more called Sunday School. And if I was a diligent student, and I learnt these words and recited them by memory, then I could receive a prize. Whilst I appreciate the thought behind this teaching, I confess there was a danger highlighted by Jesus in verse 7 when he said to the hearers of the old verse of the Bible says, vain repetition. As years have gone by, I have constantly reminded myself that I am saying and repeating words that Jesus spoke. So my reaction to the prayer should surely be, wow. I need to let the words, the sentiments, expressed to soak deep into my spirit. Jesus begins with a phrase, Our Father in Heaven. This is not to be taken as God's postal address. And Jesus, of course, didn't give us his postcode. In Heaven reminds us of the high, exalted elevation placed of God. Yet there is this strange dichotomy. I've obviously had dictionary with my breakfast cereals. But Jesus also refers to God as our Father. I was fortunate to have enjoyed a loving, caring, generous Father. So it was easy for me to think of God in the same way. I wonder what my children would say about me. Luke in his Gospel tells us that Jesus taught his disciples in response to a request posed by one of his disciples, who said, Lord, teach us how to pray. I mentioned earlier learning to recite these, this prayer as a child, but I do not recall understanding these words, the truth behind them, 
until I was an adult. And even then, only when I became a Christian, through my faith in the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. I've heard this prayer referred to as the family prayer. This might be true when it's said in the context of a family of believers. However, we must not lose sight of the fact that this prayer was taught to his disciples 2,000 years ago. And even today, the full impact of his words can only really be recognised by those who are seeking to be followers and committed disciples of Jesus. In the days when I was in pastoral ministry, one of my joys was to conduct wedding services. And I'm reminded of some of the words of the marriage service. Words like, marriage should not be entered into lightly, thoughtlessly, but with mutual respect for each other and with reverence before God. I have to apply those same sentiments as I come to the Lord's Prayer. I should not utter these words lightly, thoughtlessly, but with reverence before God. There is one very important factor for us to remember in Jesus' prayer, our Father. Jesus did not teach his disciples to pray, my Father. He's not only exclusively my Father, but the Father to all those who are seeking to follow Jesus and know him as their Saviour and Lord. It is very significant that the words I, me, my, mine never occur in the prayer of Jesus. Jesus' whole teaching and ministry was aimed at taking those words out of our everyday thinking and replacing them with us, we, ours. God, our Father, is not any person's exclusive possession. Our Father eliminates self. I'm reminded of the oft-quoted text from the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Our Father includes all those whoevers. Forgive me, Lord, for the occasions when I have said these words without truly and honestly appreciating their meaning, even when I've forgotten the man who first spoke them. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Let us come together to pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we acknowledge and recognize you as our Father, a loving Father to all your children, and we praise you and thank you for our redemption through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, taking away our sins and adopting us into your family of believers. We praise you we now have access to our Heavenly Father and can bring you our praise, thanks, our worship and all our needs and petitions. Your name is great and holy, hallowed.
and you can do all things and you have our best interests in heart always. And we praise and thank you for that. Lord, you have loved us and do love us so very much. May we desire to spend more time in your presence, to give you of our best always, and learn to love you more, as you love us. Lord, as we are in your presence now, we humbly ask you to hear our individual needs and petitions, and we bring to you our communities, our friends, relations and loved ones, and especially those with particular needs, whether that's illness, bereavement, fear and anxiety of COVID and other fears, those at school, teachers and pupils, those with financial hardship, and whatever other needs we have on our hearts. We lift all of our prayers to you, knowing you are our loving Heavenly Father. And we ask everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us this week. We are so grateful and we look forward to being with you next week. Please do send in any photos or words that illustrates for you the words of the Lord's Prayer. May God bless you 
and give you peace over the coming days and weeks. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. The Lord bless you and keep you and give you his peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. The Lord bless you and keep you and give you